Hey VC, it's me Roger back with another video. Um, something really cool came in the mail that I just have to show and uh, got our tax refund and you know, what's better than buying records? So I kind of splurged this week. So I thought I'd come on and make a video. Uh, in the background, I'm listening to DJ Wally. Nothing stays the same. Uh, this is on Thirsty Year, the Blue series, <clears throat> which is Matthew Ships. He's the executive producer, curates the Blue series. Um, this came out in 2003. It has Matthew Shipp and William Parker on bass, David S. Ware on uh, saxophone, uh, and DJ Wally, uh, Guillermo Brown on drums, Daniel Carter reads. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a time at the turn of the century where Thirsty Year and Matthew Shipp were doing a lot of interesting things with electronics. And at the time, I thought that was the future of jazz. Um, maybe it was, but. Uh, kind of petered out and Ship turned his back on electronics and he's back to playing strictly acoustic piano. Um, but I, I thought I thought these were really good, interesting jazz electronic hybrids. Anyway, cheers VC. I was inspired by Mike Bostonian Reggie's video yesterday. He also get this, got this in the mail. Like him, I contributed to uh, the Kickstarter for this a long time ago, way over a year ago. It feels like two years ago, before I ever even knew about the vinyl community on YouTube. Um, I knew about the website, Dustin Grooves. I'm sure a lot of you know about it at the time. I'm sure a lot of you also contributed to the Kickstarter. I know Dave Sequoia Flame and Andreas. Creation Thunder. Uh, they've shown this on the Facebook page. Uh, mine arrived yesterday. And oh my god, it is such a thing of beauty. Um, you know, I happily gave money and then kind of nothing happened for a long time. I, there was a while there where I was thinking this is it's going to take the money and run or, you know, it's just never going to follow through or whatever. But uh, then all of a sudden it was like, okay, we're we're putting it together and it's going to press and here it is and it is way better than I would have ever hoped for, really. Uh, over 400 pages. Uh, it's beautiful. Photographs, some of which would fold out like this and you know, not all of them, but he does these interesting joiners. Uh, you know, it's multiple exposures put together. You know, this wouldn't work if this guy, Elon Paz, the photographer, if he wasn't such a talented photographer and an empathetic interviewer and interested in this subject, uh, this probably wouldn't work. But this is just a fantastic art book. I mean, even if you're not a record collector, the photography and the interviews and the text and stuff are just... This is as nice as any art monograph I have. Um, my only complaint is that Derek isn't in it. Really cool. It hasn't been released yet. It comes out on Record Store Day. Uh, it comes out in Europe and the rest of the world in May, I think. Uh, I got it because I you know, gave it to the Kickstarter. Um, really cool. I mean, the spirit of the VC is all over this book. Uh, this is just... Uh, I think everyone in the VC should have a copy of it. It's, it's about our people, you know. Really cool. Um, I gave a little extra to the Kickstarter, and so I actually got myself an, a signed print. It's hard to read the writing. I think it's either 2 of 14 or 7 of 14. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, the image is uh, a Charlie Feathers record, Bottle to the Baby. I think from like the 50s, or a rare multi-colored vinyl for that era. And, you know, beautiful photograph. Just, the whole book is like this. 
So great. Highly recommended to you vinyl nuts. Speaking of vinyl, here we go. Now this first thing, a um, little outside of my purview. Um, might surprise some of you that I would even buy this. This is Martina McBride's new record, came out this week, Everlasting. Um, and the reason why I bought this is because my nephew uh, works with Martina McBride and works at Blackbird where this is recorded and um, he didn't do any engineering on this. Uh, it was produced by Don Waz, which is interesting, but he was around, did some videography and told me a lot of stories. Um, not a lot of stories, but some interesting stories about this record being made and Don Waz, and, you know, having lunch with Don Waz. And so this is uh, a little bit of a risky move you know, for conservative Nashville country music, because this is, first of all, on our own label, uh, unimaginably called Vinyl Recordings. And it's an album of soul covers. Uh, do you write woman, do you write man, suspicious minds. If you don't know me, not by now, uh, a little bit of rain. Um, ends with to know him is to love him. And so there's horns, and it's uh, it's got a, you know it's an R&B thing, or a country soul thing, you know, which is a legitimate kind of overlooked aspect of the Nashville country thing, you know. Um, it reminds me a little bit of that Shelby Lynn record, um, Just a Little Lovin', which is kind of a tribute to um, Dusty Springfield's uh, Dusty in Memphis record. Uh, has that goes for that kind of vibe. It's pretty good. It could have been great. Um, she she can sing, boy, um, and the performances are great. You know, ace session players, but the sound it's got that clipped country no bottom sound. You know, and this is a soul record. It needs it needs some bottom end. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, good record could have been great. Uh, people have been showing this in the VC, and uh, my wife actually had downloaded it, and she played it for me in her car one morning, and it didn't do much for me. And then we watched the movie, and that that changed my whole opinion on on this. And plus, the MP3 sounds like fucking crap, Jesus. So I had to get this on vinyl. This is the soundtrack for Searching for Sugar Man, uh, put out in 2012 on Light in the Attic. Um, you know, that documentary is so touching, um, uh, you know, about the power of music, uh, about, you know, they say there's no second acts in life, um, but this guy, he actually got a second chance, uh, yeah, fascinating, uh, music is, you know, um, very Dylan influenced, but he's got his own thing going on, uh, I, I really like a lot of the arrangements and the strings and stuff. Sounds great, really nice pressing. Lightning Attic does such a nice job. Uh, gotta love their OB and stuff. Yeah. Y'all know about this record, it's, it's great. Uh, this was in the new release bin this week. Um, this is the World Psychedelic Classics Volume 3 on the Wakabop. Loves a Real Thing, the Funky Fuzzy Sounds of West Africa. Uh, I've picked up those other in the series that are on vinyl, um, but this I think has been out for a while, but this is maybe the first vinyl edition of it. I'm not sure. It's The copyright's 2014. It's in the new releases. I'm not sure what's going on. Is it a reissue? I don't know, whatever. Cool as hell. I love that whole series. I love the aesthetic, the whole artwork. And this is, you know, great West African, you know, psych pop from the late 60s, early 70s. And includes a uh, track from William Onyabor that's not on uh, that other album. So that kind of makes it essential. Yeah, really cool. Um, and so while I was at the record store, here's the record store. 
my buddy who works there. Um, so yeah, my Grimes, and he's like, oh, yeah, we finally did it. We, we separated out by genre, so we've, not, we've got a metal section now. And we were talking about some metal stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we we're flipping through the records, and he's like, oh, did you, you know, did you get this last year? It was really great. One of my favorite records last year. Like, I didn't, didn't even know about it. Ensemble Pearl. I'm going to take this out. Out of the Blake suit. Um, yeah, Ensemble Pearl. It's on Drag City. I don't know why I missed it. This is uh, Stephen O'Malley from Ohm, uh, sorry, Sun, Sun O, uh, and members of Boris. This cool gatefold. Two LPs. Wow. Um, not quite as heavy as Sun, um, but, but similar. I, it's like ambient metal. Um, beautiful. Instrumental. Um, so grateful for VC and for my buddy Matt at the record store because he knows what I like. And um, yeah, somehow I missed this. You Sun fans, you know, ought to jump on this. Um, really cool. It's just self-titled uh, Ensemble Pearl. Excellent. So that's it for new, new vinyl. Uh, but like I said, you know, getting money back from Uncle Sam. What better thing to do than go digging? So. Uh, I went to Grimey's 2, and I went to, to uh, Great Escape. Because, although it's kind of frustrating the way they have things laid out, uh, I've been finding things, so. First thing, 10 years after, Stonehenge. This is on DRAM, US pressing. Um, the funny thing is, okay, um, the cover's not in great shape, but it's, it doesn't have a ton of ring wear. Um, great Escape will put like this little sticker that says in red ink, check condition. And what that usually means is don't even bother. Because if you look at the record, it's trash. And if this had one of those stickers on it, but uh, the jacket was, you know, if the jacket's in decent shape, I'll, I'll look, you know. And I looked at it and it's like, well, it's dirty, but I don't doesn't look trash so it had one of those stickers on it so it was cheap and I took a chance cleaned it up and it sounds great it sounds perfect uh, not a great record you know it's of its time uh, there's some cool things on it uh, a little bit too much white boy blues for me but um, yeah cool to have artifact of an era uh, and I found some jazz stuff. Uh, this one was pretty cool to find. Uh, Impressions of New York by the Rolf and Joachim Kuhn Quartet. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name. This is on Impulse from 1967 with uh, Jimmy Garrison on bass, who played with Coltrane, who died in 67, uh, and Aldo Romano on drums. Uh, the back cover has this big gouge in it, which is kind of unfortunate, but uh, it's otherwise near mint and uh, not not too terribly expensive. Uh, I wasn't familiar with Rolf Kuhn, a uh, clarinet player who um, actually had a career in the States in the 50s playing kind of trad jazz stuff. Um, and so Joachim Kuhn is his younger brother, pianist. So this is on Impulse. And um, this is surprisingly um, avant-garde and uh, really interesting. And uh, I personally love the sound of the clarinet. It's a very difficult instrument to play. I know, I tried. Um, I think it's a nice, rich sound. It has great ideas. And um, it, it's two, it's a long suite, two long tracks per side. Impressions of New York. 
This was Joachim Kuhn's first trip to New York, I believe. Um, anyway, this is great. Really, highly recommend it. Um, I know Joachim Kuhn is, is a big um, BC fave, so I'm sure a lot of people know about this record. Um, yeah, I'm psyched, psyched about that. Found a couple of CTI records now. I'm old enough to have had a bunch of CTI records growing up. And, you know, I liked them at the time, and then, you know, I went to college, and I got older, and I thought I was too hip for that stuff, and so I've been getting some of it back. Because people have been showing it, and, you know, the Fusion Heads, there's a lot to recommend to the label, and I like the aesthetic. Uh, I never had this one. This is Hubert Law's In the Beginning. A two record set. Now, I don't know if the original. I probably should have looked this up. Who cares? Because um, I've seen like this in single record sets. So I don't know if this is a compilation or if this is how it was originally released. Uh, really striking cover. Um, Pete Turner did a lot of photography for the label. Not much is known about that guy, but you know. Whatever you think of the music, the aesthetic of the CTI records were really cool. Uh, so this is a typical CTI record, you know, arranged by uh, you know Bob James. I think Don Sebesky maybe worked on this, and uh, you know Ron Carter, Steve Gadd, Ayrto, um, a bunch of keyboard players, Richard T, Bob James, um, some strings. Some interesting covers here, like uh, uh, Jim Nopidi number one by Eric Satie, which actually works pretty well. It's a nice arrangement. Uh, a year again, you know, hard bop number, moments notice. Uh, uh, the highlight of this is definitely a side two of record two. It's a 15 minute long track called Mean Lean, which is kind of funky. Hero Law is a great flautist. Um, I have to quibble about the sound of these CTIs, though. Here's another one, Don Zabeski, The Rape of El Moro. Someone showed this in the DC relatively recently. And I saw it. It's not the most common CTI. It's kind of a disturbing cover. I don't know, disturbing, though, whatever. Arty. Some water damage on the inside, but the vinyl's mint. Again, you know, big arrangements, huge, you know, strings, and there's another un unfortunate cover here of uh, The Entertainer by Scott Joplin that, you know, the movie The Sting had just come out, and so that was hip, I guess. I don't know. It could be worse. Uh, the rest of the album's good in that, you know, 70s fusion jazz way. Uh, but man, I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again, Rudy Van Geller had no business trying to record an electric fusion music. Either that or it was Creed Taylor who was telling him, oh hey, you know, don't make that bass drum sound full and rich. You know, slap a compressor on it and make it sound like, you know, a fart. I'm sorry, that's what it sounds like to me. That was the 70s, you know. Weird time. Here's some more 70s jazz. Uh, a guy that I was aware of, there's a lot of these in my, you know, out there, you know, I'm, you know, I knew about this guy, but I hadn't really collected his records or listened to him very closely, um, and, you know, folks whose taste I respect, like Chris Cole, John Coltrane 68, Derek, uh, showed some of these records in, on the Facebook page. I was like, well, okay, these are easy to find. Um, and sure enough, Great Escape had uh, three of his records, cheap, three bucks a piece, something like that. Uh, so here is Pat Martino, Joyous Lake from 1976. So you have Pat Martino, guitarist. I think I'd always had him pegged as kind of a smooth kind of guy, and it kind of is. Uh, not this, this is a killer fusion record, man. And he does some really cool stuff, like guitar synthesizer stuff for 76, which is really um, cool. Yeah, this grooves, it cooks, it, uh, great. Composition solos, 
you know, great electric piano. Oh, here's his band. You know, it sounds like a working band making a record, going making a record, and it kills. Man, this is great. Um, this is also from 1976. This is on Warner Brothers, Starbright. And yeah, this is a little slicker, and it has like Will Lee on here. Um, uh, but it's great. Uh, what a great player. So, so tasty and inventive, and not not cheesy. You know, um, even when it veers in that direction, uh, you know what he's doing is just you know, first class stuff. Uh, and I really enjoyed finding these and listening to them. Uh, Another one, this is on Muse from 1977. It's called Exit. With, uh, Richard Davis, Gil Goldstein, and Billy Hart. Uh, this is much more straight ahead kind of thing. More, more how I kind of expected, more of the repertoire I expected him to, to be into. Uh, you know, mostly standards kind of thing. But wow, just such great, great guitar playing. Um, you know, could have been a star. I, I guess, you know, the story is, uh, I think this was his last record before he had an aneurysm, a near fatal aneurysm, and had brain surgery, and lost his memory, had forgot how to play the guitar, had to totally relearn how to play the guitar. Uh, he's still around. Uh, I, you know, I haven't heard any of that later stuff. I don't know if he regained his facility, but boy, the guy could play here, that's for sure. Last one, and this was kind of a blind buy. Uh, I didn't really know, I knew one of the players on here. Uh, I, I'm not even sure what, if this is the band Alte Liebenschaften. Special guest Ray Anderson, uh, Ray Anderson, trombone player I'm familiar with, mostly from his work with Anthony Braxton. Uh, this is a German record on uh, Karsten Horn's Music for a Lot from 1988. Yeah, I, I still don't really know what it is. Again, probably should have done some research on it. Um, Andreas Kalling on tenor, tenor sax, soprano sax. Uh, there's a vocal, like some rapping in German. Uh, keyboards, Uwe Niepel, electric guitar, guitar synthesizer, computer programming, Carl Goda Johan drums and sample percussion, and then Ray Anderson on uh, with you four tracks. Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, I would have really dug this if I'd heard this back in 1988, uh, back when you know I was doing the band thing. This is this is similar in some ways to what uh, we were trying to do in the band with like a edgy rock uh, electronic component to jazz music. This is cool, you know, some of those samples and electronics sound a little dated, um, but really cool. Uh, a few bucks, German pressing, uh, totally mint. Uh, excuse me, my monitor's gone to sleep. Okay, 23 minutes. Been trying to keep these under 20 minutes, but I had a lot to show. Dustin Grooves. This has the BC all over it. I'm working on a really exciting musical project um, that I'm hoping to share with you all uh, officially uh, sometime soon. Next week. I hope. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you all have a great weekend. And I will definitely see you soon.